I'm a associate professor at the University of Nevada in uh, Reno, and I'm here to uh, talk a little bit about uh, one of the wearable technologies that we have developed. Um, so wearable computing is, uh, is all the buzz uh, lately, and uh, I'm showing a picture of Jordi LaForge from Star Trek. Um, so for many uh, decades, people have said, hey, you know, wearable computing can significantly improve the lives of individuals who are blind. Uh, and, you know, for the longest time, this was kind of science fiction. But only recently, with the introduction of wearable uh, computing technologies like Google Glass, uh, this is becoming uh, more and more re realistic. And uh, even last week, I saw a couple of really cool videos like VizWiz on, on Glass and all that stuff. It's really cool, a ton of uh, applications. Um, so we're interested in, in also uh, you know, figuring out how wearable computing can help um, with spatial perception. I'm very interested in doing spatial perception for, for navigation. In uh, prior research, we've developed an indoor navigation system called Navitar. And it's kind of like a low-cost indoor navigation system that can get you from A to B. Rather than solving the problem of localization, we're basically doing navigation using the smallest amount of information. Um, a lot of the existing indoor navigation systems require expensive augmentation of the environment with RFIDs and stuff like that. Uh, we're interested in kind of like, you know, what if you just had a map or what if you just had like low cost sensors? Can you still do some navigation? And uh, we built a system that basically uses debt reckoning, localization using sensors that are available in smartphones. And uh, what we're trying to do is basically turning the user into a sensor by having the user confirm the presence of landmarks along their path. So if you just have a map and annotate some landmark site, it allows for some basic form of navigation. And this is kind of interesting because you know indoor maps are becoming increasingly available. Google has already 10,000 uh, maps available at airports and malls. If you're interested in that, um, check the link ilka.com avatar. So we've done user studies with the system works pretty well in environments that are constrained physically, so like you know campus environment, long hallways, narrow hallways, lots of landmarks available, easy to navigate. But if you're in large open spaces, for example at an airport, this uh, our technique doesn't really work that well. You kind of have to end up you know guiding users along walls. There's not as many tactile landmarks. So um, we kind of had this idea, well, what if you could use wearable computing um, to kind of enhance the sensing capabilities of blind people. Blind people typically use their hands or a cane to sense their immediate environment, but obviously, you know, the cane has a limited length. Uh, wouldn't it be cool if you could basically sense the direction of a wall that is like 10 feet away from you without actually having to like go to the wall and test the wall? So we've been interested in, in wearable computing and you know, before Google Glass came out, uh, probably the most famous uh, wearable computing system was MIT's uh, Sixth Sense uh, project developed by or pioneered by Steve Mann in front of uh, uh, Misty's. And this is basically like a pendant based system where you have like a projector, a camera, and uh, you basically project information on walls or newspapers, and then it allows, your, it allows you to interact with the information using your hands. So when I saw the system, I was very excited. I was like, hey, that's kind of really cool, using your hands. As, you know, black people already use their hands for a lot of things, like holding a cane, touching stuff. Um, so we built a system that basically does the exact opposite of Sixth Sense. So rather than, um, you know, instead of projecting information on your environment, we're basically extracting information from your environment and then letting blind people interact with this information using their hands. And this basically kind of like <coughs> extends already, like, you know, the use of the hands and just turns the hands into like versatile uh, sensing rods. Um, so this is, um, we're using uh, the Kinect sensor, it's another um, tool that is uh, kind of like a uh, controller used for playing video games. Kinect games has also been very uh, popular and used for a lot of applications. Um, so we use, we wear the sensor on the chest uh, and it's kind of nice because it can do depth sensing. Um, so we're doing a form of like real-time sensory substitution, but converting converting spatial information into speech. Um, and our system is um, is different from existing sensory substitution approaches. There's several substitution approaches that use um, cameras or uh, haptic uh, feedback. So our system is slightly different. Um, what I see is a limitation of some of these existing sensory substitution approaches is that they're basically doing like a pixel by pixel. Uh, substitution. So they kind of like do raster scanning so you can convey um, 
depth information or colors, but this is rather slow. The user just has to wait until you know all the information is uh, conveyed. And we're um, enabling uh, to use your hands as sensing rods. So you can basically point at something and then get information. Um, so we can do it with both hands. Another thing is that we're leaving the hands free. We're, we're trying to support like spatial interaction, like interacting with objects or people. You want to go up to a person, shake their hand. Uh, you want to you know, find an object or find a wall, open a door. So it's good to kind of like leave those hands free. A lot of these existing applications are already using uh, cell phones, but you know, that's kind of hard to use if you already hold a cane or a guide dog. So you know, unless black people grow their extra arms, it's probably better to come up with solutions that leave the, the hands free. We're also interested in like leveraging proprioception. So if you find an object, you know, you, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the different gestures later. But you could, for example, like look for an object of a certain color, and then when you find it, your your arm is already pointing towards the object. So they, it's kind of natural to just extend your arm to grab it. So we kind of leveraging the proprioceptive sense, basically the ability to understand the direction in which your limbs uh, are pointed. Um, by placing the camera on its chest, we also allow for a very large field of view, much larger than when you were to use a camera-based uh, uh, solution. The, the Kinect sensor itself also has a much larger field of view, so you get a more complete picture of your environment. It's easier to find objects. Maybe with a handheld approach, you might scan over uh, objects. Uh, another benefit is so we, we can sense the Kinect sensor, the Windows Kinect sensor can sense depth, depths up to 20 feet. So we're basically proposing uh, a system that allows you to understand your environment by like holding two 20 feet canes in your hand that can also tell you, you know, what colors, color objects uh, you're touching. So that's a sick. Yeah, I'll actually, here, we'll, we'll go to it right now. So we're supporting different kinds of gestures. You know, hands, um, you know, if you look at sign language, you can, you know, support lots of different types of gestures. So we have two basic functions, obviously, like, you know, distance. It will give you distance information, depth information, and color information. And based upon those two building blocks, you can create much more complicated uh, functions using, you know, computer vision. So using the Connect library, we can actually see uh, people. So distance sensing, you basically point at something, and the camera will just see the tip of your finger and just provide you depth information where you're pointing at. Color is basically the V sign. and uh, I'll also give a little demo in a second. Human presence, basically the fist <coughs> gesture, so it'll tell you whether you're pointing at a person. This is like range sensing, so it'll give you like the shortest range. So it'll get the tips of your fingers and then get depth information to provide you with the shortest distance. It's kind of a cool function to, um, for example, if you want to you know, kind of figure out what, what is the closest object uh, close to you. These gestures are also kind of like dynamic, so you can change. So you know, if you want to change your sampling area, you can do a larger or smaller gesture. Same thing with range, you can do a smaller or larger. So you can basically, um, um, I'll show you a little movie about um, how these gestures can support uh, basic functions like you know, finding an object of interest. The next video shows like a green bottle on a table and a user moving their hand to kind of find a color and then the distance. Person found in six feet. Person found 
So it also updates this information dynamically. So you can just basically, yeah, as a person, okay. So. As some of this, if, if some of this might sound be like, ah, you know, why would you want to do it? Because you could also say like, hi, but you know, maybe people just don't say hi to the person, or you know, and there's another blind person in the room that doesn't see uh, the blind person. We've done some user studies with this, uh, trying to understand like how this will help with basic spatial interaction tasks, like you know, finding an object or approaching a person in the room, and we found an average time. For finding and touching an object of like you know in a 2D plane of 12 seconds, and finding and, and touching a person uh, in 17 uh, seconds, we also you know got some qualitative information from users. And most of the users found this system to be uh, to be useful. If you're interested in the details, you can go to the website ilka.com. Just um, some of the stuff that we're currently interested in is um, we kind of want to extend this, so um, be cool to kind of like. Uh, have this system answer spatial uh, queries. So, for example, um, you could hold an object in front of the sensor and say, "Hey, you know, this is uh, this is my microphone," and then you put your microphone down, and then you turn around and say, "Hey, where's my microphone?" And they'll tell you it's behind you. So that's some of the things that we're working on. This is kind of interesting as well because you know crowdsourcing is being used in a lot of solutions to make things more accessible for people that are blind. But crowdsourcing itself is not accessible. It's difficult to you know use mechanical turf using a screen reader and a lot of the tasks there require you to be able to see. So this could be a form of like accessible crowdsourcing. So you can have blind people actually train a collection of objects, like a you know a personal collection of objects, and then we upload it all to the crowd and do some sort of massive machine learning approach where you know we we, we train a collection of like thousands of objects. We have to like um, track objects um, so that's also kind of challenging where you are in the room, turn around, um, some of the basic stuff you could do like you know like most of um, what you're using has a gyro and a, and a compass, so I can, you can see, I can turn around and can do a step counter. So some of the basic things, you don't need very sophisticated tracking to figure out where an object is. And a lot of this stuff, like, hey, where are my keys? You know, that can be useful for sighted uh, people as well. Um, another thing, so rinse vocabulary of gestures, sorry. Well, then this is just future work. We, we don't have this implemented yet. Um, give me a second, though. I need like one minute. Um, so another thing we're going to do is like we have these building blocks. We have depth information, color. You know, can you do like you know use that rich vocabulary of gestures? You know, could we do this for like planes? Like, hey, there's a wall there, there's a wall there. Like, you know, there's a door opening there. Composite gestures. I don't know. People could do some cool stuff with this. Form factor. So this is obviously ugly, big, bulky sensor, not as sexy as Google Glass. But on the other hand, you know, this is how the first prototype Google Glass looked like, right? So uh, that was pretty ugly too. So I think for first version, uh, this is pretty acceptable. We're working on it. A prime sensor company that made the Kinect sensor, they have a smaller sensor, the Capri. It's like uh, a few inches wide. Um, hand tracking, we can, it's kind of difficult to do hand tracking with the Kinect because of the distance. It, it actually really works well, over 50 centimeters. So for a giant like me with long arms, this will work pretty well. But for people that are shorter, so we're thinking maybe using like leap motion um, to do like short distance hand tracking, and then the prime sense sensor for like sensing stuff that's far away. Uh, acknowledgements: My students, Vanita Alexander, <coughs> built this, and the NFB of Nevada helped us test it. And be happy to answer some questions now. <laughs> questions. Oh, uh, my name is Ying. Uh, I'm from Google Research. So uh, my question is: this, uh, You just talked about the sensing objects behind. This. So I was asking, so wondering about what kind of special wearing do you planning to? Do? So the idea is then to kind of like rather than just solve the problem like you know where is an object, you basically try to infer it from you know what you've seen before. So if I like say, hey, this is a microphone, and I put the microphone down, then I know, hey, you know, it's put, we're putting. It's, it's put down now, I turn so I can sense, hey, you know, my compass directions are different and maybe I'll do a few steps. So you kind of keep track of objects the last time you saw them. So there's a model of uncertainty there as well. Uh, but that's better than saying, hey, you know, we're going to put a bunch of sensors in there and, you know, put ships and everything to track everything. That's kind of hard. Uh, it's just easier to say, hey, you know, this is the last seen location. And the, the interface could also support, like, you know, where is my cup? You know, you know, three days ago it was in the kitchen. Stuff like that, you know, someone else might have put it away, but at least it provides you some pointers. Um, 
questions for just a second. Please say your name and situation. Okay. My name is Andrew Ziegler, and I'm from Georgia Tech. Um, so I guess uh, the question I had, so I know that Connect is great to make things like this happen <coughs> fast, but um, if you wanted to do something like this outside, right, it's not going to work anymore. Um, <coughs> yeah, this, want, this uh -huh. doesn't work outside at all because uh, the Connect use infrared is, um, is a little right. stronger. So I guess the thing that I was wondering is, like, do you ever think about, um, like, just putting two cameras on a pair of glasses and then, yeah. like, and just sparsely sampling an object? Because if all you care about is, like, how far away the green object is, you just find some green pixels and like triangulate just those, something like that. I could um, just get another Google Glass and just like put it on the other side. Yeah. I don't have two cameras, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah expensive something solution, like that. But <laughs> okay. That could work, yeah, you could do uh -huh. stereo vision. And I'm actually, so my background is not really in computer vision. I'm much more like an interaction design, gesture and stuff like that. So that's, we're more interested in understanding, you know, is this useful by people? Is this easy to use? Is this, does this make sense? Um, so yeah, it's a good suggestion. but. For now, we're focusing as much on hardware that's available. So. Uh, more questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.